Welcome to Fresh Friday, ladies and gentlemen. We made it once again. Once again, we've made it, Liam. It's another week. And uh, this is the place where we come together to collect our knowledge on all things brand, marketing, and digital media. And every single week, what we're striving to do is to provide you guys with world-leading knowledge and thought-provoking ideas from the world of business and beyond. And I've got to admit, today is a big one. Today is a very big one. And um, you can probably tell by the, the excitement on my face. Um, Liam, how are you feeling? I'm I'm very good. I'm I'm more excited for you personally, <laughs> um, because I know you're today. You are almost speaking to your childhood hero and adult uh, hero. I'd say. Uh, well, yeah, I suppose adult hero. Yeah, like I think you know. Yeah. I I didn't know who this gentleman was until last year, and you were like, "We need to go and do this course. We need to." <laughs> this guy's a, the man, the myth, the legend. And I'm like, I don't know who this dude is. And then it all became clear. I'm bought in. I am excited, but you are excited definitely more. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan. I'm a huge fan of Mr. Martin Neumeyer, who will be joining us very shortly. Um, and hopefully, you guys who are watching are going to learn a thing or two about the big world of brand. Um, today is all about, well, the title says it all. Brand is everything. That's something that we talk about at Fresh Movement. Not in a sense that it's everything, but you know, brand is everything in, in the business world. And what we mean by that is that it has so many different ties when you, you educate yourself, um, especially on Marty's train of thought about how big brand is and the impact it can have on, on big business. Mm -hmm. um, and it's such a pleasure as well because both you and I, Liam, have had the pleasure, like you said before, of working alongside Marty as part of his Level C Masterclass. We did a bit of filming with him. And um, we're also graduates as well, aren't we? I've got it here. It's right here. My <laughs> Level C. I've got it ready. My Level C certificate that says I'm a, a brand specialist. I've got, got my, I've got my book. I'm, a, I'm bought in equally now. Like, oh, you can't see it slowed out slightly. But I, you know, this course... This course has very much shaped a lot about what we do at Fresh Movement. Let's be honest. Like it is, there's so much cool stuff in here. And I remember going on the course and being completely blown away and walking away a new man. That's how I felt. <laughs> it, it, it was an incredible time. Um, the Level C Masterclass, for those of you who are unaware, we will talk about that um, a little bit with Marty, but it's such a phenomenal thing to do. Go and check it out. It might be sold out yet, but we'll find out that later when we speak to him. Um, but the Level C Branding Masterclass definitely um, gave us a whole new perspective on brand. And it, it was that moment where we got to sit with other professionals from different walks of life, whether they were senior executives, whether the branding specialists, whether the designers, all, all walks of life. And we got to collaborate on this, this idea, which is, you know, making companies matter. And it was a... It was a really good uh, couple of days. Yeah, yeah. Your internet's going crazy, Gaz, but I think it's okay. It sort of resumed itself there, but <laughs> we had a little slight glitch there, but that should all be good. Um, hopefully, hopefully. Chat needs to help us out again today. Yeah, we need, chat, we need, I think it's we good. Need I we think need the it's chat good. family. Well, should we, should, we tell, should we tell the guys and girls, which might get them talking a bit, we have a giveaway lined up today, don't we? Oh, we do. Yeah, I was getting too hyped. We do have a giveaway. We do have a giveaway, and it is a book. It is The Brand Flip by Martin Neumeyer. And the reason we've gone for The Brand Flip as well is out of all the books that I've read of Marty's, Four and Counting, The Brand Flip is the one for me that really made a big difference to my business, our business at Fresh Movement, mm -hmm. because it got us thinking about how do we actually make something that really makes a difference how do you make something how do you change something so it, it stands out it cuts from the crowd it cuts away from the crowd and it really kind of matters to people and this book out of all of them kind of just sewed it all together and um we want to give that to you guys so how can the people win the book liam that is the question well there's a couple of ways um first thing you need to like comment and share that's the key that that, that, that well i said there's a few ways there's three ways that's the main ways uh, but if you like, you comment, you share this stream right now, you might win a chance to um, 
get a copy of this um, great book, which is the brand. Uh, we've got our own personal copies. We've got this one specially for you guys. Um, so yeah, but this is going to be, there's going to be some really, really interesting stuff on the stream. So we're, we're super excited for it. Hence the little giveaway for everyone too. Yeah. And it's all the fan, whether you watch on YouTube, whether you're on Twitter, whether you're on Twitch, whether you're on Facebook, wherever you may be, we need the fresh community to come together and share this out and, uh, get this far and wide. Cause that's what we're here to do today. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, mate, I can see that you're teaming with excitement. <laughs> <laughs> should we like should we should we just go should we just do this let me just crack open my drink first because oh, I, have, I have got a drink today and it came in i know i look like a little bit of a, an alky at this point in time but this was given to me just before i went live on stream so i have to open it it's in honor of my beautiful girlfriend zara and um she purchased this for me as a thank you um I don't know what for, actually. She just said, this is for you. Um, and it is a very special whiskey. And I do need to try it because I think it's, one, going to calm my nerves when I speak to Marty in a minute. But number two, it is tradition on Fresh Fridays to have a drink, isn't it? Mate, I'm so not going to lie. This, this, the Fresh Friday drink review thing, I'm, I feel like I'm letting the side down. I drink the same thing every week, which is a Krabby's. And it's great. I love it. I swear by it. But, it's you know, you're pushing the boundaries of this stuff. What's that like, mate? Oh dear, this is good. This is very good. But yeah, we'll lead. It's just very good. I'll tell you what it is as well for people who are interested in whiskey. It is the Yama, the Yamaze, Yama, Yamazaki. Let's get this right. Single malt Japanese whiskey distiller reserve. It's from the oldest Japanese whiskey distillery, um, established in 1923. I've just had a sip and it's a winner. It is a winner. A that's a pretty nice glass you got it in as well. It's like a fresh Friday glass, is it not? It is a fresh Friday glass. It is a fresh Friday glass. <laughs> so we're all ready. We're all ready. We've got some people joining us in chat. Remember, guys, this is all about you as well. So be sure to get your comments in. Let us know what you're thinking and share this stream out. Not only to share the, the wealth of knowledge which Mark is going to unfold to you in a minute, but also to get yourself a copy or potential copy of the brand flip, which we are going to give away for any of you guys who decide to share out the stream later on. Now, let's introduce our guest for those of you who are unaware who he is. Um, we've already said before, we, we are fans of this man, this gentleman who has helped shape the world of brand. And for us, that is everything because we've helped it's helped build our company. Um, he's a best-selling author, selling millions of copies of his books worldwide. He is an international speaker, ambassador for brand, and thought leader, probably the thought leader in my opinion. He's worked with the likes of Apple, um, Adobe, HP to help shape their brand, and he's here today to speak to us and the fresh movement community. Ladies and gentlemen, we call him brand god. His name is Martin Neumeyer. Marty, welcome to the stream. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you so much, Gareth and Liam, two of my favorite graduates of the Sukai. Level C medicine Sukai. course. Um, yeah, great to be here. So um, what are we going to talk about? Well, you know, you know the subject of today, Marty, I'm sure. We don't, we don't bring you on here to talk about... We've had, in fact, I must admit, we have been on Twitter and I did put um, a comment out to some of our community about what type of thing should we, we you know, be asking Marty today. And <laughs> one of the things they were interested in is, what does Marty Newmeyer eat for breakfast? And um, mm. Mm. do you want to answer that, Marty? Do you want to answer the Twitter family? Um, I'm sort of an egg man myself. Uh, and so, you know, I like to keep a little bit of variety in my eggs. Uh, but uh, my wife makes them for me, so she's so kind to do this because she doesn't eat breakfast, but she makes it for me. So uh, eggs with uh, feta cheese and chives is one of my favorite. Eggs with uh, hot Italian sausage mixed in is good. Yeah. Uh, she makes a killer uh, soft-boiled egg breakfast, uh, and then she'll mix it up with uh, uh, a Dutch baby once in a while. Do you know what that is? What is a Dutch baby? Please clarify it's, it. It's uh, like a giant 
pancake that you uh, cook in the oven and it, and it puffs up. Oh, and you yeah. put maple syrup on that, which, you know, we have maple syrup here that's to die for in, you know, in the U.S. and Canada and so forth. So uh, it's, it's basically a receptacle for maple syrup. Uh, so that's that sort of thing. And once in a while, I'll have some granola with, uh, is too much information? It's not. I, I just, I've never heard anyone describe anything at breakfast as a receptacle um, for, for sugary substances. So that's, uh, that's a new one for me. No, and I think, you know, judging off uh, the likes that we've just been getting, people are very interested in your breakfast. The thing that I thought you ate for breakfast, Marty, was sloppy taglines. That's the thing I put in there, but... You know, no, no, I step on those, I smush them into the ground and then wash them away with a hose. You're 100% doing. You did that a few times on the, the Level C branding masterclass, which um, I'm sure we'll talk about in a short while. But you did ask me, why are we here today? Why are we here today? Now, the title of this stream is Brand is Everything, because that's a, a phrase that we kind of talk about in, in a, I suppose, in a chauvin manner. Like, you know, if you think about brand correctly, it essentially starts transforming into everything. That's the realization we had. Um, but I suppose to kick us off, Marty, um, for you in the most Marty style, explain to our viewers what is brand to start off. That would be great. Uh, it's very simple. A brand is a person's gut feeling about a product, service, or company. That's it. Nothing more, and nothing less. You go into that, obviously, in detail into your books. And that is, for me, the best statement I've heard in a long time, especially around brand. It says it perfectly. It says it really succinctly. And it means a, a great deal. And for the guys who are watching who've not read your book, how could you explain that in a, in a few more words? Like, what, what does that actually mean to somebody who, who's never heard that before? Well, I think you, you first have to think about uh, the older um, understanding of, of the word brand, which was uh, or a product was a brand, maybe uh, maybe the logo was the brand, you know, whatever the name or the trademark was, that was considered a brand way back when. Um, and that just doesn't capture, it, it doesn't capture the essence of, of what brand really is and what it's trying to do in business, which is to... Um, to, to create an understanding in people's minds about about a product, um, and the understanding is the important thing. Not all the bells and whistles, the details, the you know the name, the logo, advertising campaigns. That's just the you know the manifestations of it. But there's something deeper than that, and that that deeper thing is super important because it's the reason you have customers. So if you're a company and you want customers, you need to get cozy with this idea of brand because that's how you, um, that's how you connect with your customers. And in a sense, that's how they are able to control you through the brand. Yeah. So if you're trying to protect your brand because it's, the, it's your livelihood, you're going to behave in ways that um, customers approve of, right? So it, it's, it's a way to hold uh, companies accountable in a sense, too. But I think they should want to be accountable because look at what they get for it. They get a ton of customers that are so loyal that they stick with them even when they're not doing a good job. Um, and so that's a great long-term investment in your company. It really is. And I think um, anybody who that struck a chord with who's watching, I recommend highly start getting the books just as we did. So I've got a few of your books here, Marta. Um, and last time we spoke, I know we didn't delve into, we can't delve into these obviously on the stream because they're, they're all pieces in their own right. I've got a few of them here. I have got a few. And a couple of them are signed by you as well, which I'm quite ha uh, happy to say. Now, what we've just talked about there, about the, the beginning of, um, I suppose, the outline of brand, which you just talked about, that kind of is most connected to this one, isn't it? The brand gap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the brand gap is the uh, sort of uh, big bang that started all this for me um, and uh, turned out to be a huge hit. In fact, it's still the best selling of my books because it's, uh, it was the first and, um, and it, it, it redefined what a brand was at a time when people thought they knew everything about it. So um, 
very happy to have that one out. Um, that's the one that has had 25 million readers so far. 25 million readers. And this yeah. is a business book. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, not, it's not a novel. It's not a novel. And 20, that is unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. And while we're on that subject as well, Marty, we are going, what I've done, uh, we've already covered one of them, I know, um, about the definition of brand. I have picked out some of some of mine and Liam's um, top tips out of the collection of books that we've got here. And I thought we'd just pull out one or two of them and discuss them in a bit more detail. Mm -hmm. But just while we're on it, um, I'd love to just talk about um, your writing style and why something like this has been so popular, in my opinion. Um, you break down the complex into really digestible chunks and they're not chunks that um have a lot of waffle in there if you know what i mean they're not they're not um strategies that go on and on and on and they're not things that go over the head of some people they really get to the nuts and bolts of what you're trying to say and the problem you're trying to address and they lay it out in its most simplistic beautiful form what is that process like for you because that is a very difficult thing to master is it something that you're just naturally good at or is it something that um, has to be refined over time it's something that i work at a lot uh i'm very conscious of doing it uh it's something i've been doing since uh i was in art school way back in the late 60s uh and what i learned how to do was to simplify and i understood that simplifying ideas is very, very powerful, um, but it's work. It means you have to keep, you have to take an idea that's got a lot of, uh, you know, rough edges and a lot of parts to it and find the essence of it and then express that somehow, which for me was visually and verbally. Um, and, and uh, which is, it happens to be the same, uh, skill that you need to, 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 um, create an ad campaign, let's say, uh, or design a logo. You know, yeah. you have to take something really complicated and simplify it. And that's the skill of a copywriter and a designer. And I do both of those things I have done for a long time. So it's just a natural for me to keep thinking that way. But um, at the same time, um, you know, keeping an eye out for things that are just not well understood uh, in the world and then tackling those uh, which is 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 um, fun for me too because I before I do any of this work, I'm not so clear on these things either. I have to really think deeply about them and um, uh, write a lot of notes and and try out things and create little um, diagrams of what you know what's really happening so I can judge whether they're va valid or not. So it's you know you, it's it's one thing to to uh, simplify things. It's another thing to have them be useful. Yeah, because um, because yeah. there's a saying that um, all models are wrong, but some are useful. So whenever you simplify something, take away all of its messy reality <laughs> and get it down to its essence. It's essentially wrong because it doesn't contain all those things that make it real. Uh, but it's use it can be useful if it gets you to think clearly about the problem itself. And so that's what I do with my books is I create little models, little ideas, little memorable uh, pieces that you can, that pop into your mind when you're doing your job. It's like, Oh yeah, yeah this is, this is how to think about that. Uh, I've got to keep in mind that this is all about our customers. So stop thinking about the company's needs and think about it from the, from the customer's point of view. So that would be an obvious one. Uh, but, but we creative people uh, in the heat of battle tend to forget those very simple things. And we start, instead of what we should do and what it's, the world needs from us. It's so true. And one of them things, I know I've got a blurred background, so it might not come across so clearly on uh, the camera, is this one. Mm. And these little illustrations and um, notes and things that you've done, our brains are narrowed, hardwired to notice what's different. Like, they truly work. And it's a technique that I know you always coin the phrase, steal this idea. I don't steal the idea, but I've definitely been inspired throughout my career in the way you use these little techniques to, you know, add sort of reminders, anchor points, we like to call them as well. So it just 
clicks. Um, and I think the the little diagrams that that definitely helps me like to get my ideas out and see them flow and see how they actually would work in a, a real world. Um, if we look at the books, we've already talked about the definition of brand. We've had a few comments come in as well. So I'll just give a quick shout out to chat. Um, Madas has joined us. Welcome to the stream. We've got uh, Paul in there. Welcome, Paul. Paul also is a fan of maple syrup in the morning. He said um, it's a good sugar substitute. So you've got a fan there, Marty, if it's about your breakfast or anything else. He also loves your definition of brand. Um, and we've also got as well a former or I suppose a joint graduate as well of one of your uh, courses, Eddie Lopez, who was in my team. We recreated, you know, the airport, if you remember that, Marty. And um, he has got a, a question, and we're going to part that to the end because I've asked, I've had this question come through on Twitter as well. So we are going to ask that question at the end. So hold on for that one, Eddie. We will ask Marty. And he's also said Zag was the one that really made it for him out of your books. Um, it's a good segue, actually, because Zag is the next thing that Liam and I kind of really narrowed it down to. Uh, we had about 15 things we wanted to ask you, Marty, but we know that your time is precious. And also, some of these points take a, a little bit of uh, delving into. And the thing that we keep coming back to, and this is something that I think will provide so much value to anybody watching who doesn't know how to be different, doesn't know how to stand out. And it's a tool that we used. And when we tried it, it's not as simple as it first seems. But when you get it right, it works. And it's this, the ominous statement. Mm -hmm. So I suppose the question to you, Marty, is could you just um, explain to the people watching what the importance is of being different in today's world and how you'd use the ominous statement to help differentiate your brand? Well, Gareth, you set it up really well by showing the the page with all the the dots, oh, uh, yeah. with one black dot and all the plain dots. I mean that that in the simplest form, uh, that's how you stand out from the crowd, right? Like, do you want to be uh, competing with all those blank dots, or do you want to be the one that everybody notices? Um, so the, the the solution is simple: be different. But the thing is, uh, it's a it's a complicated world out there. It's a noisy world. So you can't just be a little different. You have to be very different. And as humans, um, we have trouble with that. It's not. It doesn't come to us naturally to to be different on purpose, right? In fact, I think we try not. You know, from from the time we're little kids, we try not to be too different, right? Like yep. the difference is what gets us beat up in the schoolyard. You know, <laughs> so we try to fit in. We try to do it like everyone else. In fact, we learn quickly by copying other people. So that's that's in our nature just to copy people. And we feel safe when we're copying people. We don't when we stand out, we don't feel safe. But that that the risk of of standing out is what makes some companies super successful and others just fit in with crowds. So um, so that that statement is the only blank that blanks yeah. is a very a, a, a cruel mistress. Uh, that 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 sentence is so difficult uh, because it says our brand right in your name is the only something that's your category that does something the only the only only is hard only is and um, you know if if you've ever tried it um, you have in class uh, it's very difficult um, but there are a lot of companies that succeed very well with that. Um, and manage to keep their uniqueness, you, their identity, their onlyness. And um, you can see from the results that it's a very powerful um, tool for, for getting there. And if you can't answer that, if you can't fill in those blanks, um, stop writing and fix the company because you just don't have it. It's not there. You have to have that difference somewhere in your company. And then when you identify it, and you test it and it works, you double down on that. You make sure that difference is very dramatic, very clear for people because it's all in their minds, right? It's, it's they own the brand. So uh, your brand is what they say it is. And if they can't figure it is because you haven't done anything different, 
then you're just competing with everybody else. And when you compete with everyone else, you have to lower your price to win. And that's uh, a defeat for branding. Branding is not about lowering your price. Apple does not run sales. Apple charges quite a bit for what they do, and people are happy to pay it. They're happy to be in that tribe of people. Um, and so that's that didn't come about accidentally. That came about because uh, Steve Jobs and his original advertising agency, Shia Day, did a lot of thinking about this, and they got it set in the right direction from the beginning. And he was able, Steve Jobs was able to um, continue along that those lines, staying different, staying slightly ahead of everybody, um, building the tribe, uh, and thereby building the profit margins of the company, which allowed them to keep doing what they're doing. I mean, uh, for Steve Jobs, profits aren't number one. Profits are number two. Pro number one is changing the world with new technology uh, that would enable people to improve their lives. So that's that's the perfect example of what branding can do. So many powerful messages there, Martin. I think the, the, the thing that it always comes full circle um, for me is that the only statement is, like you said, really simple when you first look at it. But then if you want to do it and you want to do it properly, it's not simple at all. And um, the power it does have it, is it does transform the way you think. Um, Liam and I have tried and tried and tried to get our own inner statement right for fresh movement. And it's important. And, you know, it's something that if you don't have it, like you said, you don't have it. Like if you don't have that differentiating factor and if it's not there really from the top, it's really hard to kind of get it in at any other point in time. Um, you, you mentioned Steve Jobs there. Is, is Steve somebody who um, you've worked with in the past for people who may not understand that? <laughs> um, I found it impossible to work with him. Uh, and I, once I met him, um, I realized this is never going to happen. Uh, but that was my dream, moving to Silicon Valley, was to meet him uh, and partner up with him in some way because I saw that what he was doing with the company is something that I could really contribute to, uh, and I approved of what they're doing. So, uh, But when I met him, I realized it's going to be you know oil and water, or oil and oil, I guess, uh, <laughs> because I think we're... <laughs> We, we are similar people in a way, uh, but he, he, no, he was impossible um, for me to work with, but I had, you know, met him. Uh, um, I actually lived in his neighborhood for a while, mm -hmm. uh, the same neighborhood in Palo Alto. Uh, and in fact, one day I almost ran over him with my car on the way to work. So that was a, um, a thought provoking <laughs> event <laughs> for both of us. That would be a way you could uh, have an only in a statement about Martin Umeyer, the only yeah. man to run over Steve Jobs. Yeah, that would have been it. Yep. Yeah. And, and the end of my career. Uh, you know, the man who killed uh, design, <laughs> the designer who killed design in America. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, but I, I did, I ended up doing some significant work for Apple uh, when Steve Jobs yeah. was not there. And uh, yeah. that was, uh, that was the best design experiences of my life. So um, I do appreciate um the hit Apple's history and how they and design and how they went about it and how they still go about it is um, super. It's great and it, and the, and the results are speak for themselves. Yeah, and it, 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 like you mentioned earlier, it comes down to that that belief in doing something different and standing for something. You know, standing for something rather than standing for a few things. Let's stand for one thing, and that thing's not profit. That thing is making a difference in people's lives. If you get a full organization to do that, the power's been proven. Um, and it's such a hard thing to do with with brands um, to kind of get them to see that way and, and think they can change the world. And it, it's 100% it's possible. Now, this is another good segue, I think, because um, one of the things, another great tool that Liam and I have used and adapted and kind of... Um, helped us build our fan metric. We were big um, believers in the power of fans or then, you know, cream of the crop customers, the people who come back and evangelize your brand and talk about it. And that's essentially what we're all about. 
one of the tools that I'm referencing is actually from the book that we will be giving away. So guys who are watching, like, comment, share if you want to win a copy of uh, Martin Neumeyer's The Brand Flip. But one of the things that we're going to show you now is this, and it's the brand commitment scale. For this matter, or the engagement ladder, um, could we explain this? Because this made a huge difference, and I know it's focusing in and out a little bit here. This made a huge difference to us at Fresh Movement. And um, I think anybody watching, if they've never seen this before or heard of it, it'll make a big difference to them and their way of thinking as well. So could you just run us through this as well? Um, it's completely out of focus because of your shallow focus, shallow depth <laughs> of field a button that you pressed. But that's better there. Um, well, I'll, I'll just I'll just uh, take you I'll take there your you listeners through it. Let's start at the bottom rung of that ladder. So what the idea is to bring your customers up a ladder from satisfaction, which is pretty low level achievement, you know, being, getting your customers satisfied with what they bought. It's necessary, but but not sufficient. Uh, bringing them from satisfaction, very good. You can see it now. There we uh, go. All the way Go to back. empowerment. Okay, so uh, let's talk about satisfaction because you do have to satisfy your clients. Yes. So um, satisfying customers is about fairness. You know, I said uh, uh, we said we're going to uh, give you this product, and it, this is what it does, and it does that fair, and we're charging a fair price. Don't you agree? Yes. Okay, I'm satisfied with that. Thank you. Um, it's the beginning of trust. If you don't do what you say you're going to do or your product doesn't do what it says it's going to do, you don't get trust. Trust is the bedrock of branding. Um, and if you're satisfied with a product, you may be willing to repurchase it. So that's important. Um, and um, it gives you a sense of closure if your customer is like, I bought it, I chose it, it worked, I feel like, you know, th that just made my day. I just got exactly what I hoped. And um, that gave me confidence in this product. So satisfaction is super important. And some some companies don't even achieve that. Right? So obviously, the only way they're going to succeed is by working harder and lowering their price. Uh, if you continue not to satisfy customers, it's going to be rough. Uh, but that's, that's a pretty low level of, um, of branding there. So we want to bring them up the ladder. The next... Uh, rung is delight. You want to not only satisfy your customers, but delight them. Yeah, there we go. So to delight a customer means you have to surprise them. So that starts really with uh, onlyness. It's like, oh, wow, they're the only ones that do that. That's amazing. Um, I'm surprised. Are you surprised? Uh, you get a peak experience from being delight delighted. Uh, so it, it, it uh, plays with your emotions. Um, you start recommending it socially. This is where you yeah. go online. You say, that was a great product. I was, I was thrilled with that product. Um, you get excited about it, and your trust increases. So like super if you can get to that. But there's more beyond that. Um, if you go beyond delight, you can get to a stage of engagement where your customers now are, they, they join your tribe. The tribe is a group of people in branding, a group of people that believe in the same brands. Um, and uh, think think in similar ways and uh, are excited by the same things and they increase loyalty because they reinforce each other's opinion about the about this brand so um so engagement is super important um it increases customer loyalty you get an automatic repurchase if people are engaged like with apple people just go apple watch because <laughs> they've been delighted before and now they're engaged that's um, it. As, as soon, I think. Let's just pause at that level there, Marty. Um, yeah. Like the pinnacle of engagement, um, where people feel they belong into a, a tribe. They feel they've got a sense of belief. In your opinion, like how many how many brands do you think are, are playing in this space? Like, mm. is, is it is it a it's, lot? It's, it's, it's a, a matter of degree. So you know, I mean, there's always a few, almost with any company there's going to be a few people but you want a lot of people who are engaged the more the better uh and so it's it's a it's a sliding scale um uh, but you, we all know the brands that are sort of charismatic that people would just support no matter what they don't even want to hear anything against that brand because they're part of the tribe now i yeah. mean 
um, these are my people, right? It becomes a personal um, attack, doesn't it? Like I've got. It, does. It's a, it becomes I, emotional. It does. It's emotional. It's very, yeah. And so they have a sense of belonging, which is an extra value that they're getting from it. Now I feel like I'm part of this group that I admire. Uh, they accept me, and obviously I'm one of them because I I appreciate the same things, and so um, whatever that you know, whatever it is, um, if you have a sense of belonging to it, your loyalty shoots up like it doubles or triples, quadruples, um, because now you're defending your tribe. Yeah. Um, and so that's pretty good if you can get uh, a lot of people up to that level. But there's another level beyond that that's um, amazing, which is the empowerment. Level. Yeah, the top level. Um, empowerment um, is when your customers get personal growth from buying your product. They yeah. feel that they um, wouldn't be where they are without your brand. So obviously this isn't going to... Um, you know, Kit Kat bars are probably not going to get up to that level empowerment. <laughs> Liam's they, a big fan of snacks. Probably, like, yeah, Liam, I, know, I know he's not on right now, so it's easy to, to chove, but he's a big fan of, I don't know if it's particularly Kit Kats, but there'll be some snacks out there. <laughs> there'll be something. There'll be something. And, you know, but that, that can definitely get to the engagement level where yeah. you feel like you're a Kit Kat person. You know, I, I always just buy Kit Kats. I mean, I'm just a Kit Kat person. So, um, <laughs> I'm not a cat person, a Kit Kat person. Very important difference. Uh, a, cat, a cat people are a whole other tribe, uh, and maybe there's crossover. Uh, but empowerment uh, not only gives you personal growth, but emotional support. Uh, it gives you business success often. Like it's yeah. like, um, you know, uh, Etsy, the company where you can sell your crafts and everything. A lot of people like they couldn't be entrepreneurs without a software platform like that to intercede for them or or even, uh, you know, LinkedIn or Twitter, you know, it's like their business success depends on that. And if they didn't have those brands, they would be uh, less than they were before. Yeah, it also gives you social status. You sort of wear that badge that I'm, you know, I'm in with this company. I'm in with this yeah. product. A sense of fulfillment in your life. So if you can get customers up to that level and the more the better, um, you have something very solid. So again, Apple hits all four of those. And probably would have one of the highest ratings. I've given. There's a little. Um, there's a um, a polling device uh, that comes after this in the book yeah. that shows you how to do it yourself. It's it's basically free to do, if you can find, um, you know, people. You get, get a good mailing list. You can start measuring your um, brand on the commitment scale, the brand commitment scale, which is what I. This is the official name of this uh, little model. Um, I just call it the brand ladder, but, um, but that's, but it's important to know how many people, um, are, how they're doing with this, you know, get a sense of how many are satisfied, how many are delighted, how many are engaged and how many are empowered. And then when you add those up, you get a score and you can measure that year over year. So the main thing is to do the same exact poll, you know, survey monkey or something will do the trick. It's not, mm -hmm. it's not, uh. It's not rocket surgery, as one of my friends said, um, but but you have to do it. Uh, so so that that's what that's there for, because uh, a, lo a lot of these things are being measured by other devices. Satisfaction, there's a, some polls on that. Delight can be measured, uh, and engagement can be measured uh, in a sophisticated way. But there's nobody measuring empowerment, and there's nobody measuring the whole ladder. So so that's why I put that in. That's just another little model to help for people who need metrics. Uh, to to plead their case with uh, the boss or the client, yeah. Um, and I think if every company uh, or or product did this every year, they that that would be um, good backup for like asking for more funding to to improve the brand. So um, you know you really need to know how you're doing. So this is a this is an easy cheap way to do it. It's <laughs> it, it, you're so humble, Mike, when you you describe your um, the things that you've got in this book, especially this, like this for for Liam and I has been such a powerful tool and I've got to thank you um, sincerely around not only providing that, because this is, this what you've got here is something that we had some kind of gut instinct that there is a way of taking customers on a journey um, by providing them with the right feelings about a brand and 
what this enabled us to do is 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 kind of build out a robust way of not only explaining it to someone and saying, look, this isn't just us saying this. This is Martin Neumeyer uh, who's saying it. You've also given us a way of how to grade it. And it's such an amazing thing. It is really, really top quality. And um, anybody out there who is under the impression that brand can't be measured, um, the actions of your customers outside of buying a product can't be measured, this is living proof of how to do that. So yeah, um, I hear that a lot. Is oh, it's, it's it's subjective. We can't tell how it ran. No, it's only subject, subjective if, if you don't measure it. So one one thing a company could do, or in fact an, an agency could do, is spend a little time um, surveying the competition. So so you use the same ladder. You measure your own customers, and then you measure customers of competitors to see how they're doing. Now that's a motivator, right? You see somebody is doing better with branding than you are. Uh, what's your response? Just to go oh, screw it, we don't need customers. No, you're gonna like spend some money to make to to uh, get get back get back up the ladder, you know. So uh, um, I think that that could be a very powerful way. And the fact that it's so simple to do, even on a small scale, um, makes it. Uh, I just I just think it's like why not do that? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Marty, we have gone through a couple of the top tips. Thank you so much for that. And um, guys, like we said earlier, if you want a copy of uh, the brand flip, please like, comment, and share on the stream. Get this out. Get Marty's message out wide. And um, who knows? You could have a free copy, courtesy of us here at Fresh Movement. So get involved in that. Also, remember to get your comments in as well. We've had a few comments in, one of which we are coming back to at the end of the stream, which will be very soon, um, just to ask you one of them questions. Now, Marty, I know we've got a little bit more time. Um, we have got a couple more questions as well, which we do want to run through. Um, so thank you for explaining that as well, these little bits. Another thing I do want to add to that, anybody who's just seen um, a couple of these things, I know there's a ton of tools as well on your website. Um, what is that, just to refresh my memory? Is it Marty Newmeyer? MartyNewmeyer.com. Yeah. There we go. And um, you can actually download a range of tools, but my advice is go and get the books because you can read in between them. It's not just the tools. I think the tools are useful for people who understand them, get you excited a little bit. But for me, you know, the books is the way to go to, to fully ingest everything. Um, cool. So we've, for those of you who are just joining us now, um, we're coming at you live with Martin Neumeyer. We call him Brand God. He is literally um, the gentleman who's wrote the book on brand. And we're discussing the importance of brand. The title is up there. It's Brand is Everything. And we've just uh, been talking about um, Marty's breakfast habits to, to begin with and also pulled out some of the top tips which have really resonated with us and some of the things that have come out of a number of Marty's books, not only The Brand Gap, Run About Zag, uh, The Brand Flip, Scramble, the thing that Liam and I have discussed and something that we'd love to hear um, your view on is you've been in brand a long time now and your books are they're kind of like timeless. They really are timeless. Obviously, you've wrote some of them and I only discovered Metaskills is six years old, I think you said before, which was news to me. These books um, have initiated kind of like a wave of uh, brand thinking, design thinking, and I suppose re-scripted what we believe brand is. From your perspective as the author, have you seen this wave of brand kind of building and building, or has it had peaks and troughs throughout your career? Has it moved from one generation to the next? I, I, I definitely seen it uh, move. It seems to grow in importance all the time, but it sort of lurches forward, you know, it'll hit a plateau and everyone will try to understand it, then boom, and so there'll be a discovery about branding that pushes it even further. And so that's what we're going through right now. But I think of it as there's like five ages of branding. So uh, the first age lasted a long time, and that was way back when uh, people used to mark their pottery and think you make a pot and put your symbol on it uh, when you sold it um, and other goods, you know. Or a cow. Yeah. Or, or the cow is obvious. That's how we. That's the problem. Is that 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 
image is, shall we say, seared in our minds. Yeah. Uh, and so we still think of branding as sticking logos on things, uh, which is way, you know, uh, just falls way short of the mark. Uh, so, but that was the first day, age of branding, just marking, marking things like the, this product was made by this guy. Um, and then pick up um, a lot of nuance in the 30s uh, with Procter and Gamble and packaging and corporate identification in the 30s through well it's still going um, and and so then there's a whole business built up around that you know advertising and uh, and um, identity development and so forth all came out of that and that's still where people's minds are now is is that part of it. Uh, but we're way past that. Um, in the in the 70s, I would say is the third age of branding where uh, people came and put a strategic um, framework around it. So Trout and Reese and then David Auker uh, start talking about business strategy, brands and business strategy and the financial uh, benefit of having a good brand and the, stra the strategy based on most mostly on uh, uh, war, uh, you know, war strategy, you know, ancient war strategy and everything, um, started being applied to branding and that gave it a big boost. Suddenly, um, companies were paying more attention and they were spending more money on it because they saw that this is pretty powerful stuff. You say ancient war strategy there, Marta. Oh, Sun Tzu and, uh, Clausewitz, uh, um, uh, you know, generals who would like talk about, uh, overwhelming force and when to retreat and, um, you know, all kinds of stuff. Uh, which is not my thing, you know. I'm not really a violent person, but I have, to, I, I, I have to admit there was uh, there's application. Uh, well, uh, because you you are you are in a battle. It's just typically though it's not two companies battling. It's like you're you're in a kind of a, a a much bigger conflict with a lot of different players, and some of them you're actually partnering with while you're competing with them. So it's much more complicated than that. Yeah, it's yeah. Three dimensional yeah. chess, you know, but. Um, but that was huge, and that's when I got into it because I, I had been um, applying this strategy as a designer and realizing nobody else did this. Uh, the strategy was all in the minds of business people, and it wasn't translating into actual touch points and you know, experiences of, of customers. And I thought, well, there's a gap. There's a gap between uh, the strategy that co companies think they're applying and what customers think they're applying, right? So yeah, that's that's the brand gap. Um, and oddly, no one had tackled this subject or even seen the problem. But as a designer, trying to make this stuff actually happen in the real world, I saw it right up front, right up close. So I, I got angry, I guess, <laughs> wrote a book about it. Uh, and uh, it struck a chord and uh, that's the beginning of all this stuff. So. Uh, so, so that was, uh, the third age of branding turned into the fourth age of branding and, uh, which is really the design of customer experience. We started to realize that customers really matter and what matters more than the functioning of the product or the service is actually the customer's experience. So remember what I said, it's a customer's gut feeling. It's what they say it is. It's not what you say it is. So whatever customers think about you, that's your brand. All right. So that's the that's the age we're in now, um, and I think we're going to see that jump up to another level uh, fairly soon. In fact, it's happening right now. What well, it is, it, 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 we have that feeling, and to to hear the the movements that you describe there in branding, you know, I can see the generation to generation and, and it's evident as well. If you look back at advertising and the way brands were perceived from these generations, you can definitely see, you know, from features and benefits to kind of like storytelling, which we're seeing an awful lot of now as well. And, and then, you know, tribes arriving and people wanting meaning and, and what, where do you think it's going then, Marty? Like, where do you think we're, we're, we're off to next? In this kind I of think, um, you know, here we are in this pandemic, and um, I think one of the things that it's doing is pushing this agenda forward. Uh, if, you know, one of, one of the industries that's been sort of in the, in the lead on branding is all the stuff that's happening in Silicon Valley and has been happening since Apple. Yeah. Um, you're you're going to see those companies do really well from the pandemic. 
because they've been anticipating a lot of this already there and they've been building their tribes investing in branding investing in the future because they actually believe there's a future uh that's different <laughs> than what we have today so uh, they're going to do really well um and we have to watch out for them too because sometimes they don't do th that they should be doing and we have to uh, be aware of overreaching technology companies that are uh, abusing their power so that's that's another thing now we have to worry about we didn't have to back in the 80s um, most people in technology were quite idealistic and now money people are all over it so uh, now it's all about the money for a lot of people um, and that's where the danger is for 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 society at large so we have to watch those, but but that's where the, you know they they are way ahead on this. And I think what's going to happen is um, brands are um, or companies that are feeble, that haven't invested in their customers, that don't have strong loyalty, that don't uh, have usefulness or onlyness, that you know they're not re relevant, uh, are going to be pushed out by this pandemic. They're, this is it for them. It's the death now. We're going to see a lot of industries uh, disrupted that industries that needed to be disrupted. And I think one of them, if you can call it an industry, is education. Education is so ripe for disruption. Uh, it's way too expensive. It's uh, irrelevant for a lot of people. Um, it uh, doesn't it's not consistent with other things we do in our lives. It's very sort of static and um, old fashioned, let's say. Uh, and you know, main thing is that people can't afford it, and and it's creating uh, huge divisions in the world where you know you have people who are educated and people who are not, and uh, they're getting further apart. Uh, and you you see what happens everywhere. We've got amazing divisions of rich and poor, educated, not educated. So that has to be solved. Uh, so big big role for an. Uh, uh, Neo-education, I guess you'd say. It, it, uh, it's so true, Marty, and I'm so glad you've, you've noted that. Um, we've noticed it as, as well, and we were actually on a call a couple of weeks ago with one of our clients, um, up in arms about the education system and up in arms about particularly what's happening at the minute in the world. You know, um, as you rightfully said, many people predicted the outcome of something that was going to happen, be that a pandemic be that a, a, a meltdown of some type. Yeah, with all oh, this technology, it, yeah. it people saw it coming and never did anything about it. And you're right, rightfully so. In, in I think what we're seeing now is this pandemic and what we're uh, you know experiencing around the world has fast forwarded um, the evolution of what was going to happen eventually. But it's really fast forwarded to a point like you were just saying around. The brands who prepared for it will probably get stronger, and the ones who didn't might fall by the wayside. And yeah, that's the that's, that's the kind of environment we're living in. Right, and the same thing with humans. Um, if they don't have the proper skills for the next round that we're going to be going through, that's why I wrote the book Meta Skills. Uh, I told you six years old. Uh, six years old. It's actually eight years old. Came out at the end of 2012. Um, and what it's saying is that there are skills that are um, sort of master skills that can enable you to adapt to a changing world if you focus on those five meta skills. And, and uh, they happen to line up pretty well with uh, creative thinking. So, uh, I mean, that's, what's, that's what has to happen is that we've got machines to do the, the part that's not creative, uh, but we need human creativity to animate it and to control it and to create a world that's better. And those are, those, those are the meta skills that I'm talking about in the book. Um, and so now we're seeing an interest in that book because people are going, Hey, this is what's missing. Um, so I'm happy that it's, um, it's kind of like a second life to it now. Um, and, uh, I think, I think what we're going to see is um, a lot more creativity being unleashed in people, um, and that's that's a great thing. We're going to see design come to the fore. We're going to see branding uh, be taken real, taken really seriously uh, by companies. I mean, companies are the you know businesses are going to change the future. The businesses have the most power uh, right now. Um, so 
we want to be involved in those businesses, don't we? We don't want to just let them um, go out. You know, that's another thing that has to change is the rules of democracy, the rules of capitalism have got to be altered and adjusted um, because uh, they're not fair. So um, we're seeing that right now and people are really objecting to that unfairness. So, you know, that's another thing that um, this sort of thinking, uh, which people are now calling design thinking, um, design thinking can can help you work through these really complex, uh, what they call wicked problems. Uh, wicked problems are problems that don't have any um, long, they don't have long-term solutions. You, you can address them, you can't ever fix them. And so you need a different kind of thinking. This is rolling problems. Uh, you know, climate change, uh, the, the, the damage to uh, the planet, so forth, is super important. And that's going to be the next thing that, that really is going to require a different kind of thinking and a different approach to business, different approach to manufacturing. I mean, huge uh, changes and huge opportunities for people that see that. So that's what I'm trying to help people with is say, look what's going to what has to happen next. Um, and there's a lot of room for uh, contributing to that. Um, you can build a career on this stuff because it's it's so new, so important, so powerful that uh, people who are, are with the program, people who have the right skills um, can really do well out of it. They can uh, create great lives for themselves and their families. Preach, Martin Neumeyer, preach. That's all I've got to say there. I, I actually wholeheartedly agree with pretty much every single point you've just made. And what you've described is a new way. And like you've said, if, if you can employ design thinking, whether that's in uh, an ecological sense, whether that's in an ethical sense, whether that's to drive the world forward, we need more minds like that at the helm of business. And what what you've done is lay out the roadmap for companies to do that. And I, for one, are thankful. I know the guys who are watching are thankful. And we'd like to thank you on behalf of us and everybody else who's watching right now, Mike, because I think what you're providing is not only the inspiration and the education, but you're also providing an actual roadmap that companies can actually get on board with. And the more people that reassign themselves to this way of thinking about mattering rather than marketing, which I've heard before, is is just going to make the world a better place. So thank you so much for that. And um, I think I think that's how we'll finish the stream. Um, I don't really think we can take it any further. There is something else, Marty, I do want to ask because we did say we were going to go to chat. Now, this question has been asked three times. So um, shout out to Matt Davies, who you know very well. Matt actually tweeted. He recommended we got you on the stream, by the way. He was like, get get Marty on the stream. Get Marty on the stream because uh, he's the guy who inspired me. And this question, actually, Matt's mentioned it. Um, also, Eddie, Eddie has mentioned it as well, who was on the uh, brand masterclass as well, alongside mm -hmm. us. And... Mm -hmm. That question, Marty, is who has inspired you in your career and what book, what is the one book, I know you've read so much and we had a chat about this just before we jumped on, but is there a book or a person or an author that you could recommend for the guys to jump onto um, which has helped inspire you? Uh. <laughs> uh, well, I was inspired um, originally by Marshall McLuhan, uh, especially a book that uh, was a, a book by someone else who took his uh, book, The Medium is the Message, and turned it into a visual book called The Medium is... Hold on, I'm going to get it for you. I'll show you. Let's go. Guys, if you're watching the stream while Marty's going, grabbing the book that inspired his career, um, like, comment, and share because this is a moment like no other. Um, you also get the chance to win a copy of the brand flip as well. So um, smash that like yeah. button, get it shared out, and let's okay. see what um, so, Marty's got for us. 
I wouldn't say that this is the one that inspired my career, but I th- I would definitely say it's the one that inspired my first book, which was a business book that looked like no other business book ever published, which was a scary thing to do, but I couldn't not do it because this had such an you know, it made such an impression on me. Here it is. All right, so uh, the this is called the medium is the massage, <laughs> not the message. Very nice. And it was done in conjunction with Marshall McLuhan by an art director uh, named Quentin Fior in New York. So in this book, uh, let me just page through it. It combines like all the crazy stuff that was happening in the '60s with. Uh, communication and what's changing and it's just so alive and uh subversive <laughs> that i uh, uh there's a person who's burning themselves uh so you can see there's just lots and lots of type i can see the influence as well there martin 100 uh, percent uh just really simplified, but uh, completely engaging. You're like looking at a movie or maybe even a, a comic book or something. Yeah. Uh, but um, yeah, I mean, just super uh, typographical. And anyway, so that one uh, I got while I was in art school. And it stuck in my mind, and I just thought, why aren't there more books like this? This is this is modern storytelling, you know, in in book form. Uh, and but nobody else ever did anything like that. So, but I that's the that's what I had as a model in my mind when I did the Brand Gap. So that was influential for me. Now, as far as how I put together the idea of design and brand strategy came when I read all the books of Trout and Reese. You know. Um, Jack Trout and uh, Al Rees, uh, they they invented the concept of of positioning back in 1970. They it was invented a little the that, concept of positioning. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if not invented it, named it, gave yeah. it a name, and gave it a framework. Um, and when I read those books, or when I read that pamphlet, I just said, this is genius. This is amazing. Now, all the work I do, uh, I need to be successful because I'm being strategic about it instead of just using my design sense or my communication sense or my sense of humanity, uh, whatever it was I was using at the time. Now I could be more strategic on behalf of companies. So those were huge. They're still good. Uh, you can read the 22 immutable laws of marketing. That's fine. It's got everything in there. Uh, uh, so, but, but the thing they didn't bring into it was the execution of the strategy because they weren't, that's not who they were. They weren't designers. They didn't, they weren't advertising. Maybe they were in advertising. I'm not sure about that, but I think they, they, they didn't know how to, uh, execute all these things. Uh, so I came from the execution world, but I didn't have the positioning framework. And once I got that, then I realized this is this is what we need. We got to put those together. It's yeah. two two sides of the same coin. Um, so that those are good. Uh, another book that I read that maybe I wouldn't recommend because it, it actually we we understand it all too well now is uh, it's called The Third Wave by Alvin Toffler. That got me to move to Silicon Valley. I realized I had to be where I had to be on the burning point of history. I, I read that and I just said, "This is activity is going to happen." So um, my wife luckily agreed with me. We moved all the whole household up to Silicon Valley from where we were, and uh, started a whole new life there. And it was terrific. Just everything I thought it would be and more. Um, now, for for books that you should read now. Uh, one that made a huge difference is the the innovator solution. Innovator solution. Um, this has the concept of disruption in it, um, and now we're going through a time that requires and rewards disruption. So I talk a lot about disruption in our master class. Uh, it's based. Zag is based on the idea of disruption even before that idea was 
came out was already thinking in those that direction was that you really need to be different and disruption is about being so different that you change the industry and make it irrelevant uh so uh, uh his name is clayton christensen christensen he died recently but that book um is seminal so i would say it's still really good um and now i think you you all you almost have to start reading some books that um, are more negative. Um, uh, books uh, from uh, Susanna Zuboff, Shoshana Zuboff, um, Surveillance Capitalism is a very good, uh, big book. I mean, if you're into that kind of thing, that one will really get you to think. It's gotten me to think a lot about what's happening with Facebook and uh, Amazon and Twitter and things like that that are not so good for us, right? So we have to come to grips with those. And uh, Brandon has a lot to say about that. And, um, you know, companies that are um, mining our data for free as if it's a free resource and then using it to narrow our world down to benefit is not a good thing. It's manipulation. And we don't know it's happening. So we engage happily with Facebook and things like that without because we can't see the problem. We can't see um, the, the theft that's happening. Uh, we can't see that the power that we're just handing over to these large, powerful companies. So um, if we all understood that a little bit better, we'd see some really good changes happening in the world. Um, we see less, uh, less divisiveness, less uh, unfairness, inequity, so forth. So those are things we need, maybe need to start paying attention to. What's There's another book like that. By? That, what was that that's book again? called Surve Sur Surveillance Capitalism by Shoshana Zuboff. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to read a, a more user-friendly version, um, uh, it's called uh, 10 Reasons to, to um, Close Out Your Social me uh, Media Accounts Now, something like that. Uh, I'm trying to remember uh, the author. It's been a while since I read it. I got it in the Tate Museums. <laughs> that's where I saw. But oh, that sounds good. And I know the uh, the author whose name I can't remember is actually one of my favorites. I'm just I'm blanking out on him now. But he's from technology and he's against the stuff that's happening. He's he was like a pioneer in technology, going oh, put the brakes on. Uh, they're 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 ruining our our society with this stuff. So uh, he gives you ten reasons to shut down all your media, social media accounts. Probably not including LinkedIn, uh, but uh, most of the other ones that <laughs> any, any company that's stealing your information or, or taking it without, you know, through their user agreement, taking it and selling it to advertisers is manipulate, manipulating you in ways that you cannot actually see and, and or feel. Uh, and it's happening to everybody so that um, it's just changing society um, uh, so that we have fewer actual choices in our lives so you know uh okay remember his name it's jaron lanier j-a-r-o-n-l-l-a-n-i-e-r jaron lanier 10 reasons to disconnect your social media accounts uh or something to that effect uh anything he writes um is very thoughtful and he's to be trusted so anyway that's an easy book and you read that in two hours and I think the big one for me is these books, like you talked about, it's an important thing for people to do is read negative books. That in itself seems like a controversial statement, but I 100% agree with what you're saying, is it's okay to look under the curtain as to what's happening in society and what's happening in the big world. And I think specifically for people who are interested in changing the world, people who actually want to make a difference, people who actually want to get under the skin of these big brands and, and force or cooperate with them to, to initiate a nice, a nicer world, a better tomorrow. Yeah. You have to see both sides of the argument and you've got to look at these different perspectives and you've got to bring them together like you did. Uh, uh into yeah, one I mean, into one train of thought it's it's these problems uh that emerge where that's where the opportunities are so you know um if 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 uh facebook is ruining society there's there's a 
opportunity to start a business or you know an organization to address that. So it, it's always this. This is you know we're in a period of constant change. There's a lot of roiling. Um, the waters are roiling. Um, it's a good time to um, find out where the issues are and 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 build a business or a reputation or a, uh, a career on that. Um, you know the the whole thing about um, doing well in the world. Um, supporting yourself in the world is, you know, you're looking for two things. You're looking for what the world needs at any given moment, if it's hidden, uh, a little bit hidden. And you're looking at what uh, what turns you on. What what are the things that you love to do? Where are your strengths? Um, where can you really be uh, helpful and useful? And where, the, where, where what you want to do and what the world needs overlaps, that overlap is where you're going to be really, really powerful and um, contribute, be able to contribute a lot with, uh, joyfully, you'll be able to do your work joyfully. And, um, that overlap is going to be moving during your, your life. It's going to be moving around. The world is going to need some things, some one year and something else the next year, you're going to need different things for, to fulfill your destiny. Um, so you're always going to be kind of, uh, changing and shifting with that. If you're smart, you're not going to just, it's not a set it and forget it situation where I'm just going to learn how to do this and that's it for the rest of my life. That's how I started my career is I'm going to be a graphic designer and that's what I'm going to do forever. And that was the, actually the model at the time, uh, people got into it and they just kept doing it until, you know, they died at their drawing table. So, uh, you know, and so I thought, well, that's fine with me. It's great. I love doing it. But uh, I found that about every 10 years I needed to make a significant shift uh, for myself and for what the world needed. So that's that's the model for that. Just two circles that overlap. You, you're the little one and it's overlapping a big one. So much stuff, Marty, that we've talked about and so many inspirational ideas, thoughts, messages, references. Um, I think we're going to have to call it there. Um, one, I think, I think Liam's headphones are dying on the other end, which is, which is one, one component of that. The other one, I'm very aware that we've, um, we've, we've taken so much of your time this evening and thank you so much. Well, it's morning where you are. Thank you so much for joining us, Marta. Um, would you be willing to do this again? That is the question that we always ask our guests. Uh, anything for my graduates. You did oh. the work and now you get the you get the spoils. Let's do that. I think um, we have got, and I know we've 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 not really spoken about level C masterclass apart from me and Liam flashing our certificates. Um we've got Andy Starr coming on in a couple of weeks. So we will be doing a full deep dive into level C branding masterclass. So look out for that um, for the guys who are watching. Um, just before we leave, Marta, how can people get in touch with you if they want to do so or find anything about you and your career? Well, they can just uh, link up with me on LinkedIn. Simplest way, start there. So uh, just Marty Neumeyer, one word, I guess, on LinkedIn. Uh, and I'll see it and I will um, accept your invitation and we can take it from there obviously you can go to marty and my emails there you know so if you need the email directly that's fine uh and then level c.org is a good place to look and see what all the cool stuff we're doing with the uh the master classes in, in especially if you know that you're going to be listening to my partner andy Starr, who's um a really cool and lively guy he's of um no one ever said he was lacking opinions, which is uh, one of the things I really love about him. And he's super smart. He really is. He really is. We've had the pleasure of uh, working with Andy and yourself, and we can't wait to get him on the stream. So we're going to be focusing on brand strategy and what you guys are doing as a collaboration to bring that to the, the C-suite of today's business world. Um, Marty, thank you so much um, for joining us on the stream. Guys who are watching, remember, if you want to win a copy of the Brand Flip, um, all you have to do is like, comment, and share on the stream, whether you're watching it live on demand. And if any questions come through um, on demand, we will do our best to get them to Marty um, offline as well. Um, and that's all. Marty, thank you for joining us. I think we're going to flip over to Liam and close up the stream, um, and we'll see you soon. Gareth, th uh, thanks, Liam. You guys are great. Thank you so much, Marty. What a hero. Like, <laughs> what... Marty is dropping knowledge bombs like there's no tomorrow. 
Like, <laughs> there was so much stuff there. There was so much stuff there. I'm just glad I had my whiskey. I've got to say, it got me through what was knowledge bomb after knowledge bomb. And, um, you know, like you said, we started off there um, with a brief introduction to Martin Neumeyer and his career. We went on about his books. We talked about his breakfast habits. And then we got into the nitty gritty of the world of tomorrow. So um, if any of you guys are only joining us right now, be sure to check this back out on replay because um, that stream is full of, uh, of juicy freshness. And that's all we're trying to achieve here at Fresh Movement. Um, we are going to be jumping on again next week where we have got another guest. We've actually got um, Douglas Burdett, who is from the Marketing Book Podcast, who is another um, massive guest for us. And we're incredibly grateful for the people who have accepted to come on Fresh Movement Live. Um, so um, remember to share out the stream and invite more people. The more people who hear these messages, the better. That's what it's all about. And um, any messages from you, Liam, before we uh, we close this one out? The only thing is, I'll say thank you, Fresh Fam. You guys made this possible. We reached out to Marty on Twitter. Matt Davey said it, and it happened. And without you guys, we wouldn't have been able to do that. So thank you so much. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to um, I'm looking forward to the next next week, next Fresh Friday. We got loads lined up, people. We ain't stopping. We ain't stopping. So thank you very much yeah. for tuning in. Thank you so much. And um, yeah, we've done, we've got 10 back to back episodes planned for you guys. So this is season one. And um, at the end of season one, we'll take all your feedback and move on to season two. So um, thanks for joining once again. And um, sharing is caring. Get it shared out far and wide and uh, keep the fresh movement happening. Uh, I've been Gareth. He's been Liam. And before we're joined by Martin Neumeyer, and we will see you on the next stream. Keep it fresh. <laughs>